All right, folks, I'm back, and I figured out the problem with the Blender application while it wasn't working. Um, I was using the old version of Blender, and it didn't work. So now I'm putting this Blender application up. I had some computer freezes and crashes as well, and so hopefully this will work out. All I'm going to do is move the character onto Blender, um, maybe resize it a little bit, scale it down, and then move it over to Adobe Dimension. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's click over here anywhere in the gray. If you ever started your blender, you don't really need this part here. Um, it gives you the options to play around with your default. We're not going to worry about that or go into recent files and stuff like that. So let's click in the gray and you want to delete this first um, primitive shape to get it off of the viewport. You just hit the delete key on your keyboard and then click delete here. And that deletes it so that way you don't move that actual um, object into the whatever uh, project you, that you're trying to create elsewhere. So we're going to go to file and go to import and we're going to look for wavefront object file and then we're going to go and find it. You can hit this arrow if you don't find it in the main folders that you see there. We're going to go in a subfolder which is 3D objects and then go to make human where I saved it at and then I'm going to open up the one that I actually um, downloaded um, or exported from make human which is this one baby Borg one object and um, this was the original one I don't know the difference between both but I think this one has more details on it so we're gonna go import click this import object file make sure the file name comes up here and the right file folder shows up click import object and then it's going to go through and then merge it in and it actually merged it in as a pretty decent size actually this is the one that I exported so it's it's already done so let me delete that sorry about that that's what happened I previously already done it um, I resized it that's what that was so we're gonna move in again go back to that folder and select baby Borg object file not the baby Borg one that was one that I redid go to import and this is the size that it comes in as so that's why we want to scale it so go to scale and you just move the mouse sideways and you can scale it down that's not bad right there that should work out pretty decent on um, Adobe Dimension and then we're gonna go to file and export as the same file type wavefront object file and then that's going to send it over to um, the make human folder that you created actually let me go back go back again 3d objects we're going to go to make human and then save it um, I already saved it as a uh, baby Borg object one so I don't have to do it again I just wanted to show y'all folks that and then go to Adobe Dimension or any other uh, 3d modeling tool that you want to move it onto that accepts object files and um, you can even move it onto uh, Microsoft paint paint 3d they have the 3d um, object uh, tool that you can create using paint 3d we're gonna go click create a new project from Adobe Dimension or Adobe Dimension CC which stands for Creative Cloud we're gonna to go to file and go to import 3d model and then we're gonna find that baby Borg one object file and then open and that's gonna merge it in and it's gonna be very tiny so you wanna to go to scale and then use this white box and go right on the screen with the mouse scrolling right so you can bring it in view and there we go so now we can play with this if we want to I'm scrolling in just to merge it in we can play with it and we can try to you know detail how we want it to look so how you do that you go to the folder over here where it says scene you have environments and you also have your subfolder 
Um, if you want to change the environment, you can change that. Right now, this is my environment light. You can go into your environment lights and you can change how you see fit to what type of environment light you want. So you wanted the bluish, weird looking stuff or purple, um, purple type yellow, whatever, or a natural light like in um, maybe on a road or in the forest or desert, stuff like that. I also have some environment lights that I got from my Creative Cloud library. I actually moved to my Creative Cloud library. I got it from Adobe Stock, which are free ones that I got. And some of these environment lights look really cool. Uh, let's hide some stuff. Um, how do we hide it? Let's see. I think we can push this all the way up to the top. Um, click this down arrow. There we go. And now we can check. Actually, not that down arrow. There's a way to hide this so you can bring it up. I've done it before. That sends it down. It, let's see. Um, I don't know. It's all good. You can look through it over here. And let's choose this one. Let's see what this one does. Should make it brighter. There we go. And then we can go in, click this down arrow, and then start playing around with it. Female generic basically is the skin texture and the clothing. Um, I was playing around and manipulating a little earlier. Say I wanted to add one of my designs that I have, not designs, but um, materials that I have from Adobe Stock. I can do that just by clicking on it and it goes in and it tries to bring in that content to overlay on top. Um, I can go and play with the bodysuit itself and detail which one I want it to look like. Maybe I want it to look like this. So it's going to go in and try to work on the bodysuit. And then I also can go in and play with the skeleton. So the skeleton, I want the skeleton to be like metallic. So I'm going to go in up here and use a different material, maybe a silver or aluminum. Silver, I like silver a little, better, a little bit better. Now, you won't be able to see through the actual suit unless you chose more of a, a transparent type of material. So let's go in and see what it looks like as it is. It's not going to look that spectacular yet unless, like I said, you start working on transparency. Um, as you see these little small specks and all these differing things, you can go and you can fix that um, how you see fit. Hopefully this comes out in a render preview. But uh, let, let me scroll in a little bit more. Hold on. Closer. Let's not move too quick so we don't freeze the computer. But pretty much this is going to be the render preview for now. Eventually you can work on the eyes and all that stuff. They have other portions you can play with. You don't have to play with the tongue and the, you know all the other things. This is the eyes here. I can go and work those in. Maybe make them blue. Or some other color. Um, turn them into a glass so it can reflect the actual light. If I want to so let's just turn them into glass or metal metal would be good and that will reflect the actual um, environment light so we can turn them around and then you can see how fine-tuned detailed it's gonna look and then bring it in here <clears throat> and like I said, all these small little specs and all that stuff, you would have to work on that. But pretty much that's it right there. In a nutshell, what I came out with. Um, and then the renderer will try to render every pixel how it sees fit based on what you chose to use in materials and whatever you added as the 3D object. Background, 
uh, for the background of the 3D object and the foreground, whatever you have as the 3D object. Um, and it goes in and really does come out photorealistic, it brings a really great effect. So that's the power of using Adobe Dimension. Other than that, it's limited. You won't be able to, you know, send this actual 3D object as you chose to detail it to other tools. It won't go as a 3D object file to another tool. It has no export option. So you go to file and as you can see, it says import and that's it. You can't export it, but you can make a photo of this in a PNG file or a Photoshop file once it's done and then you can use it as a mock-up somewhere for maybe a product design that you're working on or some sort of abstract art art uh, 3d graphic art or for your website stuff your YouTube stuff whatever you choose to to use it for as a graphic and that's basically the limit for um, using Adobe Dimension but I like the fact that you can manipulate and create some artistic looks that's why I really enjoy it and I'm playing around with 3D and I'm learning more about 3D in materials because with 3D you have to put materials on top of the 3D objects to make it look good. To make it look good, to make it stand out, you have to resurface it. Surfacing is important. Lighting, you have to understand all those differing aspects of the 3D world viewport and dimension so you can bring out the best effects to make it look a certain way. So this is more like a set stage to start out with in 3D and that's why I enjoy Adobe Dimension that's why I chose to create this whole series around it and try to get all these third-party tools that could help me to merge into it and um, before I actually got into those other tools I was limited to using what is available here which is the model section on Adobe Dimension and just some of these lights that they have and materials which you somewhat are limited to those when you first start out until you start to realize you can build out and create your own stuff. You can also create your own materials from the real world, which I have over here. A lot of these materials on the bottom. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five of the materials I created myself using Adobe Capture, the Adobe Capture app, which basically functions through your smartphone and through the app itself. And you can take photos, snapshots of real world materials and merge it in. So um, all this kind of stuff I'm going to try to put in the video's description area. If you want to check it out, you can go and check it out. And that, that will help you to start building your knowledge base and tooling and to merge more into the, the world of 3D. Um, getting started for those who are beginners, definitely. And if you're novice, just starting out and you've already been in, into it, but you haven't caught on that well, this will help you to go further for sure because I'm novice and it helped me to go a lot further. And I'm able to even get on to tools like Houdini, like I showcased in the beginning of this series, and be able to learn how to use it. Um, without this kind of knowledge, I would be really lost with a lot of it. So um, let me end this session. I'll be back with some more videos. Hopefully this one doesn't crash before I end it. And um, I have to also start work. I got to get to work, try to make some money. I'm on my grind using um, Grubhub and um, doing um, Uber Eats. Sometimes Uber Eats doesn't work out for me, so I have to jump on another platform to help me to earn some money. But um, I'll be back.